Hi, my name is John Rinaldi with another of my videos on some aspect of manufacturing. Today I'm talking about some myths that I hear, things I've heard about cybersecurity that really kind of irritate me. Let me say at the beginning, I am not a guru in cybersecurity. I'm just a manufacturing guy that has a little bit of common sense and knows when I'm hearing you know what, that from, from some of the vendors that are trying to sell things into this market. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of things that people are thinking that, that, that are just wrong, and I want to correct that today. So I came up with the 10 myths of, of factory floor cybersecurity. The first one is that you know, protecting the, these manufacturing networks is the job of the IT department. No, no, no. They've got plenty to do trying to, trying to, trying to manage this massive corporate network. They, be, they, you know, they might be interested in helping you. They certainly want this to be protected. But really, that's not their job. Their job is up here on this. As a manufacturing engineer, you're responsible for making sure that this system is operating at 100% effectiveness. That includes protecting it. It's the job of manufacturing engineer to do security, cybersecurity on the manufacturing floor, not the IT department. Second thing, the threat is external. Well, no, not necessarily. I mean, there's, you've got people, you know, a lot of places I walk around and I see open ports on switches. I see the ends of linear segments with an RJ45 connection just sitting there. Anybody can walk up to that network and plug in and do whatever the hell they want. Um, then I see, you know, I see people that, you know, we've got people on the IT side that, hey, I think I, I got some extra time. I wonder if I can get into the manufacturing network. There's, there's got, you got vendors walking in, in the plant that, that are doing who knows what, that have, you know, malware on their laptop, and they're plugging in someplace to here too. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that are internal, you know, and, and not to mention even the disgruntled employee, the guy that really hates the company and wants to do some, something really bad to make the company not succeed, to destroy some of the productivity here. That's a possibility too. So you've got a lot more to worry about than just external threats. It's not China, North Korea, Iran, or somebody in, you know, in his mother's basement that you have to worry about. You gotta worry about what's going on within the, within the four walls of your building too. All right, myth three. This one I hear a lot too. We're too small to be attacked. Who's gonna fool with us? That's completely wrong. Hackers love small companies because small companies aren't spending money on cybersecurity. Small companies aren't investing time to try to figure out how to protect themselves. But they do have access to cash to pay ransom. How about that? So that's really, you know, essentially that's, that's perfect for a hacker. Company that doesn't have much in the way of security, but they have access to cash. Boom, why, why fool around and try to get through Ford's defenses or Boeing's defenses who've got trained cybersecurity professionals that are trying to keep me out when I can go to little Joe Blow manufacturing company over here and attack them, lock up their servers and, and get me, you know, 50,000, 100,000, not bad for a day's work. So if you're a small company, you gotta be more worried about protecting your manufacturing network and your IT network than, than even the bigger companies. So that was number, number three. Number four, a lot of people think that that you know if you've been if you've been hacked, that's absolutely untrue. What happens is somebody gets into this network, whether they steal credentials, they they trick somebody into clicking on a phishing email, they put, pick up a U, USB stick that has some malware on it, whatever. Once this is this thing is in there, the a hacker now has access to this network. They're not going to immediately do something. They're going to spend maybe hours, days weeks, even months to look around. Oh, is there a database out here that has some stuff I could steal and sell on the, on the dark web? Is there, you know, can I access the manufacturing network and have some real fun by changing their PLC programs? I mean, they're looking around to see. So you may be infected and not know it. I had to talk about in another video that we have to really look at this, vit, at, at this network as if, as if it's compromised. From a manufacturing point of view, you're, you have to look at the corporate network and say, that network is compromised. 
and I got to be very careful with everything that comes in to me through that man to that manufacturing network. Uh, myth five: Cybersecurity is a technology issue. Hardly, it's not a technology issue. It's real. It's more of a human issue than it is a personnel issue than it is a technology issue. It's trying to get all these people who work in your corporation to understand. Don't click on phishing emails. Don't don't click on that fake fax or the fake UPS notice or whatever it is. There's a lot of technologies. There's also a lot of operational issues. When we start talking about cybersecurity for the factory floor, I hear things like, hey, we're going to change out every device on the factory floor and put a security chip in it. I think that's that utter nonsense. So this has got to be, you know, we've got to figure out what's the easiest way to protect our, what's the best way to protect our factory floor that's also not going to be incredibly costly and it's not going to in, in, impact our operations staff. So there's much, it's much more than technology. It's really an organizational issue and a human resources issue and training issue and all this other stuff. So that's, a, that's another one that we have to get past. Myth six. Cybersecurity is too complex, and I just don't have the time to learn it. Well, yeah, it's complex, right? There's TLS, and, and, there, and then there's X509 certificates, and there's all this fancy, these fancy algorithms, and RSA, and I mean, you know, the acronyms go on for, to the moon. Well, you don't need to know that. All you need is some common sense to protect yourself, and I'll talk about this a little bit more later, if you can, can have some common sense and have one connection to this compromised IT network and watch what's going on through there and making sure that only authorized, authenticated messages are coming through there, then you can have a very secure manufacturing network without knowing a darn thing about all of those fancy terms and how cybersecurity works. Okay, another one. That was number six. Number seven, digital and physical, secu physical security are different things. I mean, I, I, I was in a plant a year or so ago, and I was in the control room, and they had maybe 25 different PCs lined up, and they had 16 big screens all around the room. And on every PC, there was a, a Post-it note with the username and password. I mean, I could have you know, sat down and... and probably logged into any one of those systems, and I bet nobody would have stopped me. <laughs> I, I, I walk around the plant and I see open, open uh, RJ45 ports. Oh, I can go plug into that. Oh, look, at here's a linear segment, and the last device is an RJ45 port. Here's a switch, and there's, there's four open ports on the switch. I bet those switches aren't locked out. I mean, the, you've got to know who's on your factory floor. You've got to know what they're doing. You've got to protect yourself from people accessing your manufacturing network. Uh, you know, having physical access to the manufacturing network before you can actually, if you don't do that, there's no sense in talking about a good cybersecurity appliance here. Number, number eight, we have a firewall. I hear this all the time too. Yeah, our firewall's fine. The hell it is. I mean, if you've got a firewall, all that says is, hey, address X can talk to the PLC here, which is at address Y. Boom, boom. So this thing, this fire, a firewall here will let anything that's, that comes from X talk go to Y. Now, if this guy gets compromised, instead of asking for the three tags he normally asks for, he asks for 50 tags. He starts writing tags. He starts downloading PLC programs. You can do all kinds of things, especially if these are older PLCs that don't have the, the advanced security protection. This is an old, you know, it could be an old Siemens, an old Allen Bradley, but hey, once you access it, you can do whatever you want. Uh, so, so the firewall is, is, is really just inadequate protection for your manufacturing network. Number nine, this one I like, says that factory floor security is really a lot harder than this IT security because, well, we've got machines here, we've got things that are moving, we've got conveyor lines, we've got valves that are opening and closing, we've got all this air going boom, boom, and whatnot. So, but actu in actuality, the reality is, is that this is a lot harder. Over here, we know every single message that should be on that network every day. 
it, and it never changes. It's going to be the same today. It's going to be as tomorrow, as the next day, as for the next five years until we, until we update this network. We know everything that's supposed to happen here. Is that true in IT? Absolutely not. There's some new people coming in. There's people accessing a new website they never accessed. They're using a new application they never act, used before. They downloaded a new tool. There's all sorts of things going on here. Here, you need fancy AI to kind of look at what's going on and is something, you know, is there somebody that's looking around that shouldn't be looking around? Here, we can easily protect this with a little bit of common sense. We know exactly every message that should be coming from that IT system into our manufacturing system. And if we get a decent security appliance that can make sure that those, are the, that those ones are the ones that are authenticated, they're authorized, then we're not going to have a problem here. We'll be able to do everything we do with this network we do today without making any changes if we just get the right security appliance to do that. Last one. Factory floor security is difficult to achieve. Well, I just talked about that. If you get the right cybersecurity appliance that makes sure that these messages are the ones that you've authorized, then you'll be, you'll be fine. You can get through there, and you can protect your manufacturing system. And you can continue to do things like lockdown. When you, when it, I don't know how people, people come up with these schemes of, of putting chips in all these devices. So we're going to put a security chip in there. Well, how the hell are you going to change out a valve at 2 o'clock in the morning? Are you going to have an army of IT people around 24 hours a day so that they can upgrade the security and do all the things that need to be done when you're changing out a device in the middle of the night? Uh, it's, you know, are we going to pay, is everybody going to want to pay for all that to, to add all new devices that have these, these expensive, fancy security chips? and all the operational expense of all changing all the procedures. I just don't see how that's going to work. I'm just a common guy. I don't have, I, you know, I'm not the sharpest pencil in the drawer. It just seems to me like the common sense way to do this is to just make sure that these messages are messages we want and, and be done with it. Now, I got a couple of things I want you to do. I've got a cybersecurity education email series. Every two weeks I send out another email about something I've learned about cybersecurity. Because I said, I'm not a guru. I'm just a manufacturing guy trying to learn this stuff. I've also wrote a paper because what's happening, one of the things that's happening here is there's a bunch of IT people that, that write, you know, that do cybersecurity up here saying, hey, we can do cybersecurity down here now. And they try to adapt their stuff here. And it just doesn't work because they just don't understand this. So I wrote a, a, a a couple of papers that I think that you'll enjoy. The one that I've, I'm linking below is eight ways that you can easily protect your, your control system without spending a dime. There's a whole bunch of things that kind of solve some of the problems we've talked about today. So it's, it's just little things that really easy to do that can go a long way to protect your manufacturing system. So I hope you'll download, this, I hope you download that paper. I hope you'll, get, you'll join my education email series. And I'll talk to you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.